Hashing and encoding are essential in cybersecurity to protect data and ensure secure communication. For example, hashing creates a unique code or hash for passwords, and that makes them unreadable even if the hash is stolen. And encoding converts data into a safe format for transmission, sort of like Base64 encoding used in email attachments to prevent data corruption. And in this lab, we'll demonstrate the usage of both of these concepts. First, let's get some data to work with. I'm going to use an echo statement to put this is a sample text file inside of sample.txt. And then I'm going to run the md5 sum command on it. And what this does is that it calculates the md5 checksum or the 128 bit hash value of this file. And now we have a statement, we have a hash that we can verify for the integrity of the file to determine whether it's been tampered with or corrupted. Essentially, this hash value right here is the representation of this is a sample text file inside of sample.txt. We can also run the SHA-256-SUM command against the same file, and notice that the output is tremendously larger, and that's because this is a stronger and more secure hashing cryptographic algorithm. This is actually a 256-bit value, so it's the same representation, but it's longer, it's more difficult to crack, it's just much more secure as a result. So let's demonstrate something by copying sample.txt to a brand new file of copy of sample.txt. Then let's run the same md5 sum and sha256 sum against the copy of sample.txt. Now let's look at these outputs. Notice that they're exactly the same. The MD5 sum and SHA-256 sum for both of the files is exactly the same, but the file names are different. And remember, that's because I explained that that representation, that hash is just a representation of the this is a sample text file string inside of the file, not the file name. It's a representation of data. So let's tamper with it and see what happens. Let's vim inside of the original file and let's throw in some extra data, maybe four capital A's in the beginning. We'll save it, and then we'll check the new hash with the md5 sum command. So we can see it's changed, and it's actually changed quite drastically. And that's a sign of a good hashing function, is that a small change of a couple characters should also have a tremendous change on the new hash. That makes it harder to crack and harder to reverse engineer. So now what happens if we restore the data back to its original state? Let's vim back in. Let's delete those four capital A's, save the file, and then we'll run the md5 sum command against it again. And look, it's exactly the same. So it's actually returned back to state. And this is how we verify integrity. And yes, if you're thinking while watching this, well, that means someone could go in and change something and then go back and we'll never know. And, and yes, that's true with a hash at least. And that's why we have logs and other events to determine what also happened on a system because the hash alone is not enough. It's just going to let us know that the data is exactly what we expected it to be. All right, so that's hashing. Now let's go and take a look at encoding. And again, this has a bit of a different purpose. So first things first, we're going to need to get ourselves some data to work with. So I'm going to echo some text to encode and transmit inside of a data.txt file. Now let's cat it so we can see what it looks like inside and then we can compare it to an encoded statement. Now I'm going to run the base64 command. And if I run base64 data.txt, we now have the encoded output inside of base64. And it's the same data, it's just been encoded, it's just been moved around and reshaped, but the data is still the same. And encoding, remember, it's meant to facilitate a different objective. It's meant for data transmission over protocols that don't typically support binary data or other formats. So with encoding, we can actually take any input, then we can convert it and encode it into a format that different endpoints can all understand and then decode as they need. Okay, so there's also something kind of funky at the end, those equal signs there. Now, we need to demonstrate something for that. I'm going to go and echo a capital A character, and then I'm going to pipe that into a WC tax C command. And what this will do is will give us the output in bytes. 
we can see here that the capital A is two bytes in size. Okay, so let's run that command again, but let's pipe it into base64. Now notice there's that little equal sign again at the end. Something's going on, right? Well, what if we did two capital A's and saw the byte count? Okay, so that's three bytes. So if we were to do two capital A's inside of base64, well, those equal signs are now gone. If we want to get more specific, Base64 uses 64 ASCII characters to encode data that when encoded in multiples of three bytes, it's generally going to be safe. And when I say safe, that means no data loss in transmission. And if it's not in a multiple of three bytes, it will add this equal sign at the end. And that is to achieve padding, to achieve the three byte segments. And this actually looks like chunks of four ASCII characters at a time to us as humans. So this is a characteristic of base64 encoding as a result, but it shouldn't always be trusted as such, because if the input is equivalent of three byte chunks, as we saw with two capital A's, it doesn't always mean that we're going to see those equal signs. In fact, let's run base64 again against the data.txt file, and then we'll count it in four character chunks. So if you go and count this super fast, four characters at a time, you're going to end up with 40 characters. And now if we go and get the byte count of this file, so we'll go ahead and run a WC tax C against it. And notice that it's 28 bytes, 28 bytes, two equal signs of padding, and that bumps it up to 30, 30 bytes of even trusted input, which is also representative of 40 characters. Cool, well, let's see it in action. Let's base64 data.txt into an encoded data.txt file. And imagine that's a transmission happening in place. If we cat the encoded data.txt, we see our encoded data. And all we need to do is run base64 tac d to decode it, and it's returned back to its original state. And that's why encoding is so powerful, because we can take any input, generally with any types of characters, run it through a base64 encoding, and then the encoded base64 format of the data is generally a very trusted state that won't have any loss in transmission. So then when it's received by the client or the server, they can run a base64 tac d or a decode command, and then they'll have the data exactly as it was intended by the sender without any loss. So just remember that hashing is a one-way function for data integrity verification, fixed in size and irreversible. Whereas encoding is meant to format the data safely for transmission, but also be able to be decoded back.